بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد From the guidance of the Salaf of this Ummah, Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, the pious predecessors <coughs> who adhered to the Quran, the Kitabillah, wal Sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they preserved this religion. Some of the benefits that we gain, and this is a very beneficial book, I just want to. Uh, Read a couple of benefits. Min hadi salaf fi talab al -anum. This is from the guidance of the salaf of this ummah, meaning the pious predecessors, regarding seeking the knowledge. Talab al -anum. And there's so many fawaid and benefits that we can gain from, and I'm just going to briefly go over some of the benefits in the beginning of the book. This is in the introduction. And this book was compiled and organized by Dr. Muhammad ibn Matar al-Zahrani rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the former professors at the Islamic University of Medina. So he compiled this and may Allah have mercy upon him as he passed, I think right after finishing this book, around that time when this book was printed, he, he passed rahimahullah ta'ala and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon all the ulama, the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah in the past that have preceded us and bless us all with ikhlas with abad. So from the benefits or the Im most important characteristics regarding seeking knowledge, and we've mentioned this before from this very same book, one of the first characteristics is ikhlas, is having sincere sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the Muslim is ordered in the Quran and in the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to be sincere. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa ma umiru illa lahu deen. And that we've not command we did not command them except to worship Allah alone with sincerity. Mukhlisin Lahu Deen. And for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the deen. That this is what the believers commanded with, and this is what the Ummah before us was commanded with, to have sincerity, that they should not commit any shirk, because shirk negates sincerity, because true ikhlas, lillah, is sincerity in worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is worshiping Allah without any partners, without any form of shirk, whether it be the major shirk, people making, prostrating to idols, and pictures of Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam, or wearing the cross and, and saying Allah is three or that Allah is the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit and all, all of that, those are very open manifestations of polytheism. However, a part of sincerity as well is negating, sharing, uh, even showing off for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning doing an act of worship and sharing uh, in it with uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, the person who begins to pray, pray and beautify his, his or her prayer and they do it to please the people, then in this situation, the minor shirk has entered into the ibadah. So that negates ikhlas, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as talib al-ilm, seeking the knowledge is a type of uh, ibadah, it's one of the greatest forms of worship that we can do, then, therefore, it requires from us sincerity, as all worship requires from us sincerity. And the Prophet wasallam said, مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْعِلْمًا مِمَّا يَبْتَغَى بِهِ وَجِ اللَّهِ لَا يَتَعَلَّمُهُ إِلَّا لِيُسِيبْ عَرَضًا مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Lam yajid arfal jannah yom al qiyamah. So that the person, the Prophet wasallam said that the person who seeks the knowledge 
uh, for other than seeking it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to seeking the, the, the face of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, and that they, they do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instead of for the dunya. Because if they do it for the dunya, the, this worldly life, whether it be gaining fame, whether it be gaining, to gain fortune and, 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 and so forth, and then they will never smell the scent of paradise. So it shows us the importance of sincerity. That knowledge, seeking knowledge, also requires from us sincerity. And there's so many ahadith to illustrate this, this principle for us. Another thing the Shaykh mentioned, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, to Daraj fi Talib al he said, also it's imperative that we seek knowledge in stages. Don't involve yourself. If you truly want to seek knowledge, please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember it's ibadah. Do not seek knowledge to debate people and argue with people. Do not seek knowledge to be better than others, but rather to remove the ignorance from yourself and remove the ignorance from your community, perhaps, and your family and those around you. And to darraj fi talib al-ilm, it means to seek knowledge in stages. Begin with the small issues before the large issues. Don't begin with issues of who's uh, a deviant and who's on the sunnah. Those aren't the, the key important issues for you to busy with your, yourself with in order to get to paradise. Those are more advanced issues. Now, of course, it's imperative that you take knowledge from only Ahl sunnah And that will be also made clear from the Shaykh's uh, treaties. So, seeking knowledge about the basic things, beginning with uh, the Qur'an, trying to memorize what you can of the Qur'an, learning Tawheed, learning about the uh, monotheism of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He is about His Lordship, uh, that He has divine names and attributes that He should be called upon and, and worshipped by, and that He subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship, that all your worship, your Hajj, your Talib al-Ilm, your uh, prayer, your uh, uh, Tawakkul, your Tawassul, all of these things should be are acts of worship that should be directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So these are the most important affairs to begin with. Learning the Arabic language, so that way you can go to the sources, go to the text, and you can seek advice and seek knowledge from the scholars of Islam. Those are some of the um, uh, important ways in which we can make tadarraj, that we should busy ourselves with those important uh, affairs. Some of the Salaf said, like Abdullah bin Mubarak, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Kana, uh, Kanu yatlubun al-adab thum al-ilm. He said that the Salaf, that they used to learn manners, then they would learn knowledge. And a part of that as well, with this tadaraj that we're talking about, was seeking knowledge in, the, in its correct, uh, uh, in order and in an organized fashion and beginning with the most important matters before the secondary matters. A part of that is learning those things which are most important, as we mentioned, uh, Tawheed, the monotheism of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, learning how to pray properly. Those are the awliya, those are the beginning stages of knowledge and the, and the, the uh, the priorities that we have to strive to as a believer to to learn about how to how uh, to purify ourselves tahara those issues of tahara begin yourselves with uh, busy yourself with those issues first before you get into the sciences of hadith like jarwa ta'dil and you want to know you know how to nakhla mukhalif nakhla mukhalif meaning to talk about uh, indiv individuals criticizing individuals those are parts those are also important parts of the religion but those are reserved for those who uh, who are who have the ability and the knowledge and the understanding of those principles and how to do that to know and to be able to determine when someone has left the fold of Islam and someone has remained a Muslim when someone has become a heretic when someone is a person of Ahl Bid'ah and Hawa those that type of knowledge is not the beginning knowledge that is not for the beginning student of knowledge nor is it for the general people as many of our Salaf of this Ummah and the later Day scholars like Sheikh Salah bin Fozan and, and others have illustrated for us in their treaties, in their countless books, and the text. 
and in their lectures and their questions, their answering, answering of the questions. And so begin with those important uh, things and then to the secondary uh, matters. So begin with those knowledge, like the knowledge of Tawheed, learning the Quran, uh, learning what you can of the Sunnah, uh, learning the Arabic language, first and foremost Tawheed, learning basic fiqh, uh, fiqh ibadat, how to make tahara, how to make salat, how to, um, uh, how to fast the month of Ramadan, because those things every Muslim must do. Every Muslim is included and is required to do those pillars of Islam. How to pay zakat if you are a person who possesses any amount of wealth to which it is required to pay zakat on. You need to learn those principles. What do I have to pay zakat on and what do I not have to pay zakat on? Uh, the, the, the amount of zakat, etc. If you uh, are able to make the pilgrimage, to make the hajj, the, those that it becomes a requirement of you, then you need to know how to make the hajj, the pilgrimage. So those are the beginning uh, aspects of knowledge that are required of us before we get into the other matters. Another important benefit the Shaykh mentioned, Rahimullah Ta'ala, as far as the characteristics of seeking knowledge, he said, He said that, uh, the, that a person should strive to gain the correct understanding, not just understanding that you studied with this guy, and you studied with this guy, and you studied with this one, and they give you all kind of deviant understandings which go away from the Qur'an, which go away from the Sunnah, which go away from the Salaf of this Ummah, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een, but rather you have to adhere to the correct path and take knowledge from Ahlul Sunnah on the path of the Salaf of this Ummah. How did they seek the knowledge? They strive to gain correct understanding, husn al-fahm. Uh, Khatib al-Baghdadi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, al-ilm huwa fahm. وَدْرَايَ وَلَيْسَ الْإِكْثَارِ الْإِكْثَارِ وَتَوْسِيعِ فِي رُوَايَ And that's a beautiful narration of one of the salaf of this ummah. He said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, Knowledge, it is understanding and understanding and practicing that, that knowledge. And it is not from, and it is not memorizing a lot. It is not from memorizing a lot and paying attention to those issues like uh, the ruwayat, you know, uh, that that is not the asla of the, of the knowledge, but rather the asl and the, the asl and the foundation is understanding that knowledge and practicing it. So it doesn't come from just memorizing. And I'll give you an example to hopefully clarify this for us. It doesn't mean you're negating the minhaj of ahla hadith. Never. No one can claim that we are saying this, nor is the Sheikh saying this. What he is saying, and nor is Khatib al-Baghdadi saying this, but he's saying that, for example, meaning that some individuals, they focus on only memorizing. How many people do we know have memorized the Qur'an? All throughout the Ummah, walhamdulillah, that's a great ni'mah from Allah. But how many of them don't understand it? They don't know the Arabic language, and they don't know what they've memorized. How many people who are extreme uh, extremists and sh extreme deviants, regardless, of, you know, they are in their various, with all kind of deviant, unorthodox creeds, but yet they've memorized the Quran and they've memorized things from the Sunnah. There are many people uh, uh, and, and students and so called ulama that have memorized a lot, but they have little understanding. Maybe they don't practice what they preach and what they've read, and what they've studied, or they have a weak and deviant understanding. They change the meaning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine attributes and names. They practice practices that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not legislate, nor did the salaf of this ummah uh, legislate. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. And this required, so that lets us know that it's important to have, if we want to seek the knowledge like the Salaf, that we have to strive to get the correct understanding. To focus on practicing what we preach and not just memorizing without understanding. Another important thing the Sheikh mentioned, the last thing he mentioned with regards to the characteristics, he said, Al-Hars 
على تثبيت العلم وتثبت فيه. He said that it is imperative to strive to practice the knowledge and to authenticate uh, sound knowledge, meaning to authenticate this is the need that we have for Ahl Hadith, that they can tell us a imma like Imam Al Albani in this time. Rahimullah Ta'ala, Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi, Allah Yarhamahu. These great Imams that, and, and other than them, is, are many, that they spend their time, they were from Ahl Hadith, and they served the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, by spending their time authenticating and determining by those kawai, those principles, and those foundations that the Salaf of this Ummah laid down for determining whether a Hadith is authentic or unauthentic. So because they did this, this khidma, this service to the Ummah of Muhammad Wasallam, we should benefit from their books. We should benefit from what they left, this treasure they left behind for us. So it is upon us to practice what we, uh, to what we learn, as well as make sure, making sure that we gain from those books that have been authenticated and that the knowledge that we are transmitting and the knowledge that we are gaining is authentic knowledge. And some of the ways in which we do that, the Sheikh mentioned, some of the ways and means that we do this is that we take knowledge from the ulama, the scholars that are well known for the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and practicing it. That's one of the things. And avoiding deviant, uh, deviant scholars, deviant students, and deviant preachers. So that we have to go to authentic sources. That's one of the ways in which we can uh, authenticate the knowledge is by taking from the people, those great imams and those great scholars that are living and those that... Uh, passed on before us, who have, who left uh, immense tapes and books and other ways in which we can study and learn the religion. So that is one of the ways in which we uh, in which we can uh, authenticate our knowledge. And Imam uh, Muhammad ibn Sarin, rahimahullah taala, who died in Mia uh, one hundred and fifteen Hijri this great imam, one of the salaf of this ummah, one of the tabi'een, he said, لَمْ يُكُونُوا يَسْأَلُونَ عَنَ الْإِسْنَادِ فَلَمَّا وَقَعْتَ الْفِتْنَةِ قَالُوا سَمُّوا لَنَا رِجَالَكُمْ فَيَنْظُرُوا إِلَى أَهْلَ السُنَّةِ فَيُخْذُوا حَدِيثُهُمْ وَيَنْظُرُوا إِلَى أَهْلَ الْبِدَعِي فَلَا يُخْذُوا حَدِيثُهُمْ A beautiful narration by Ibn Sareen, Rahimahullah ta'ala, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he said that we didn't used to ask, because again, you got to remember, he was, uh, uh, I believe he was a tabi'i, and he, so that means he met sahaba of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. Or, or one of the itba'a tabi'in, one of the, you know, he met those who met sahaba. And so, he, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, we didn't used to ask about the chain of narrators. Because at the time they were dealing with sahaba, those, and the sahaba are all thiqat, all the sahaba are trustworthy uh, narrators of hadith. And they're all uh, trustworthy, and you can take your religion from the sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu ta'ala majma'in. He said, so we didn't used to ask about the isnad, the chain of narrators. But then when the fitna came, you know, Ahl al-Bid'ah and things began changing in the religion, there was fitna killing between Muslims um, and uh, devi uh, deviant creeds began to appear and, and, and so forth. Then they used to say, meaning the, the, the people living at that time, the Salaf, they used to say, tell us, name who your, uh, your narrators are, who those people you take your knowledge from. And then they would look to 
if it was someone from Ahlus Sunnah, they would take from them. But if it was someone from the people of desires and the people of innovation, then they would leave their narrations. And that shows us a very important principle, going back to the, the point of mentioning is, is that take your knowledge from authentic sources and those people who are authentic, meaning that they follow Kitab Allah wa Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Minhaj of the Salaf of this Ummah Radiallahu Ta'ala Anu Majma'in. The Shaykh also mentioned from the ways in which we can uh, authenticate our knowledge is by determining whether a hadith is sahih or uh, whether it's authentic or unauthentic. And this comes from those imams who preceded us and who did this great service by uh, taking, looking at the science of hadith and the importance of it and disseminating that knowledge for us to benefit from. So going to their books to, to learn what is sahih, what is authentic, and what is unauthentic. Uh, some of the ways in which we can ground ourselves with the knowledge, he mentioned, rahimullah ta'ala, he said by gaining correct understanding, and this was already mentioned. Another way is by memorizing and practicing, and this was the minhaj and the methodology of the sahaba and the salaf of this ummah, radiallahu ta'ala, anu majma'in, is that they would... Uh, the Sahaba, when they learned, the when they were memorizing the Qur'an, as it was narrated by Umar bin al-Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, I believe, or it was Ibn Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, that he said that we used to, you know, when memorizing Baqarah, they would memorize ten verses, and then they would practice it. They wouldn't memorize it. Other than that, they would, until they practiced it. Then when they were practicing, then they would memorize another ten. So that shows us that their minhaj, their methodology, the methodology of the Salaf for memorizing was practicing, was learning and practicing. Practicing what you preach, practicing what you study. And this is going to help you affirm and ground yourself in knowledge. Another thing the Shaykh mentioned, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he mentioned to also make, um, to make revision, make revision with other students of knowledge and those around you and, of course, the ulama, the scholars, so that you should accompany people of good who you can benefit from and who you can remind one another with the knowledge and you can look into issues together. Hey, let's look up an issue. What do you know about this issue? Let's go to the text. Let's call Sheikh so-and-so. Let's benefit from one another and benefit from this suhba, this husna suhba, this great uh, companionship uh, which encourages one another and reminds one another to uh, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and practice and revise the sunnah, uh, our practice of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and our memorization of it. And another thing the Shaykh mentioned, he said also that it is important to be patient and diligent and persevere in trying to attain the knowledge, that it's not going to come overnight. That if it's necessary and a person is able to, then they should strive to travel to lands where a knowledge is being disseminated, disseminated where there are scholars, well-known scholars of Ahlul Sunnah that you can benefit from, that you can sit under, sit at their feet and gain knowledge from them, gain the wisdom, look at their manners and their um, their ways of dealing with people, and uh, and their taqwa. Taqwa, their, their God-fearfulness, and learn from their manners and, and how they treat others and how they practice their knowledge. And the last thing he mentioned, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, or the last two things he mentioned, he mentioned also that a person should be pious in striving to seek the knowledge, being humble. And concealing your good deeds. So don't mention to people, oh, I did this and I did this at, at night. I pray like this or something, especially to show off and brag. But rather the Salaf, they used to, beginning with the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, ajma'in, that they would conceal their deeds. And they would run from making fat fatwa, you know, to making religious rulings. And they would conceal their good deeds and they would do a lot of good deeds and practice and be humble. And the last thing he mentioned is leaving off 
argumentation. This is also, you'll find this in the books of Creed, the early books of Creed from the Salaf of this Ummah, uh, is that they left off getting in arguments, getting in debates, getting into, uh, you know, things, uh, you know, controversial issues, and especially with those people from the people of innovation, the people of deviance, the people who have a different creed, a different understanding of Islam, that you should not involve yourself sitting with them, um, taking them as companions, and you should not uh, get in ar arguments and debates regarding the deen. The Salaf of this Ummah, they hated this. They detested this. And there are conditions for when it is permissible to, uh, to, to have debates and so forth. And that, was, that has been laid out by the, the, the scholars of this nation. And we ask Allah the Almighty to help us to gain ilm nafi ruskin tayba wa amlan mutakabbilan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.